Hello everyone! On the last episode of Tinkering with Terrius, we built the NOT gate, the AND gate, and the OR gate, as well as we looked at their truth tables. So on today's episode, I want to look at the NAND gate, the NOR gate, and the XOR gate. The first gate we're going to look at today is the NAND gate. So you can see the symbols here for the NAND gate. It's basically the exact same as the AND gate, except that it has the bubble here to indicate that it is an inverted output. Now these symbols here, I had them on the previous video as well. These are the IEEE symbols for the logic gates. Personally, I much prefer the standard symbols, the old-fashioned ones, because they're easier to identify just by looking at them. On the IEEE gate symbol here, the way to tell that it is inverted is by this little line here that has the same purpose as the little bubble. The NAND gate consists of two transistors, just like the AND gate. However, like the NOT gate, instead of taking the output from after the transistors, we're taking it from before the transistors. So we're going to have input A going through a high value resistor, in my case I'm using a 10K resistor, into the base of transistor Q1. The transistors I'm using are 2N2222s. We're going to have B coming in through a high value resistor into the base of Q2. We're going to have the emitter of Q1 connected to the collector of Q2 and the emitter of Q2 connected to ground. We're going to have the collector of Q1 connected through a lower value resistor. In my case, I'm using a 5.1K resistor, and we're going to have that connected to VCC. At the junction point between this resistor and the collector of the transistor, we're going to take out our output. You can see here on the truth table that it is the opposite of an AND gate. So if A and B are a zero, then we're going to have a one on output C. If A is a zero and B is a one, then we're going to have a one on output C. If A is a 1 and B is a 0, we're going to have a 1 on output C. But if both A and B are 1s, then C is going to be a 0. Okay, so let's build the NAND gate now. So here we have the built NAND gate. So we have power coming into the switches here, which are acting as input A and input B. So input A is connected to the transistor 1 with a 10K resistor. Input B is also connected with a 10K resistor, but it's connected to transistor 2. The emitter of transistor 1 goes to the collector of transistor 2. The emitter of transistor 2 goes directly to ground. VCC is coming into the collector of transistor 1 through a 5.1K resistor. We also have the LED hooked up through this junction here. This is the output that we had on our diagram. And you can see with no input on, the LED is lit. With that button pressed, the LED stays lit. Same if the bottom button is pressed. But if both are pressed together, the LED goes out. That's how we know we have successfully created our NAND gate. The second gate we're going to build is the NOR gate. The symbol for the NOR gate is very similar to the OR gate. However, it has the bubble on the output. The IEEE symbol is the same as the OR gate except for the slash to denote that it's inverted. So we're going to build the NOR gate with two transistors. However, it is possible to build a NOR gate with only one transistor and I'll show that after. 
We have input A coming into the base of transistor Q1 through a 10K resistor. We have input B coming into the base of Q2 through a 10K resistor. We have VCC coming in through a 5.1K resistor. Now VCC is going to connect directly to the collector of Q1 and the collector of Q2. We have the output coming from the junction point of the low value resistor and the spot where Q1 and Q2's collectors connect. The emitters of both Q1 and Q2 are tied directly to ground. And the truth table is very easy. If inputs A and B are both zeros, then output C will be a 1. But any other combination, an output C will be a 0. The LED is lit. If we press input A, it turns out. If we press input B, it turns out. And if we press both input A and B, it stays out. We have power coming into this button here, which is input A. We have power coming into this button, which is input B. We have a 10K resistor going to the base of transistor 2 and to the base of transistor 1 from their respective inputs. We have the emitters and the collectors here tied together on both transistors. We have power coming in through a 5.1K resistor to the collector of both transistors. We have the emitter of both transistors connected to ground. And then we have the little LED here acting as the output from the junction point between VCC and the collector of the transistors. And the LED is just hooked up to ground through a 1K resistor just to make the blue light a little bit dimmer because otherwise this is obnoxiously bright. We can make a one transistor NOR gate which is just tying inputs A and B together into the base of a transistor. And then same process, the transistor's tied to ground, VCC comes in through a resistor into the collector of the transistor and at that junction point we take our output. Okay, so you can see that we have the one transistor here, the LED is on, and just like the other, NOR gate, if we press input B it turns off, if we press input A it turns off, if we press both inputs it turns off. So here we have NAND and NOR with two transistors and NOR with one transistor. So now we have the XOR gate. I've seen some schematics put it as an EOR gate. The symbol is identical to an OR gate except for this extra little crescent here. The IEEE symbol has an equal one in the box here instead of a greater than or equal to one. The XOR gate takes the most transistors of any of the gates we've built so far. It contains an AND gate, an OR gate, and a NAND gate. 
Now you can also build an XOR gate just out of NAND logic gates. However, it takes five or six of these to build it, so it's a little bit less efficient than the circuit we have here, because that would be 12 transistors instead of just six. Input A comes into the logic gate here and goes directly to input A of the NAND gate. It also comes up and goes directly to the input A of the OR gate. Input B comes into the B input of the NAND gate as well as the B input of the OR gate. Then the output of the OR gate comes into the input of the AND gate and the output of the NAND gate also comes into the input of the AND gate. Now it doesn't matter really if you put the output of the OR into input A or input B on the AND gate so long as the NAND output is on the opposite one. And then from the AND gate we get our output. The truth table of the XOR gate here is that if A and B are zeros, C is going to be a zero. If A or B is a one, then C is going to be a one. But if A and B are ones, then C is going to be a zero. So with this gate, I find it very easy to get distracted and lose track of where you are in connecting it because you're essentially building three little logic gates right next to each other and then hooking them together. So I find the easiest thing to do is to place all of the transistors and then build each gate individually and finally hook them up to each other. Now just to save some space on the breadboard here, I've also bent some of the pins on the transistors just to tie them together. So for the NAND gate, I just put the emitter of transistor A into the collector of transistor B right away. That way I don't have to use a little jumper across. For the OR gates, I did a similar thing. I bent the base of transistor A here out to the side and I bent the base of transistor B here out to the side and then just connected them. Put them on the same rail. That way I don't have to put a jumper between the emitters and the collectors of these two transistors. I left the AND gate separate just to make it easier to connect over the outputs of the OR gate and the NAND gate. Just gives more room. Aside from the small hiccup because I had the power connected to ground for this switch by accident, it was all fairly easy to build. It's quite a jumble of circuitry here. We have the two switches which are connected to power. Switch A is coming over to the base of transistor A on the OR circuit as well as it's coming down over here to the base of transistor A on the NAND circuit. B does the same, it comes up to transistor B and comes down to transistor B. Transistor A of the NAND circuit goes through transistor B 
the emitter is tied to the collector and the emitter of transistor B comes out here directly to ground power is coming in through a 5.1k resistor to the collector of transistor A then from there we have the output of the NAND circuit coming over here to the input B of the AND circuit of transistor B. We have the emitter of both of the transistors of the OR circuit coming through a 5K resistor to ground. We have the collector of both of the transistors on the OR circuit hooked directly to VCC. We have the emitter connected through a 5.1K resistor to ground. We're taking the output from the junction point there of the ground and it's coming over here to the input of transistor A on the AND circuit. The collector of transistor A here is connected to VCC. The emitter is connected to the collector of transistor B. Transistor B is connected to ground through a 5.1K resistor and the output which is this little blue LED is taken from this junction point and connected to ground through a 1K resistor just to dim the obnoxious blue LED a bit. So when input A and B are zeros, output C is a zero. When input B is a one, then you can see output C turns on. When input A is a one, output C turns on. But if both input A and input B are on, then output C is a zero. We have the basic logic, the not, the and, and the or that we built. We have the one transistor nor, the two transistor nor, the NAND, and the XOR gates. I hope that this binary adder series is going to be interesting for you. And I hope that these two videos about building these logic gates was informative or helpful in some way. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to share this video, feel free. If you have questions or comments, then please leave them in the section below. Otherwise, you can email them to me or tweet them to me. If you enjoy my videos, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Every subscriber helps. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.